Don't worry, I'm getting my hair cut soon. <laughs> Do I look like a mad professor yet? That's the thing. Yeah. Right. Good one. Today is Easter Sunday and it's one of the most special days that the minister really looks forward to uh, and, and the Christian calendar. But yesterday I received some devastating news, not to do with my family, um, but to do with a family I'm very, very fond of. And that news was the tragic loss of a young family member. I felt so heavy with sadness and sorrow yesterday evening. That's when I was told. I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to turn up today. If I could, I would have handed it over to someone else. I couldn't even pray for this family unless you count tears as prayers. I thought, how can I lead a service centered on the joy of Easter when I feel like this? But then later on, God speaks, us, speaks to us wherever we are. And I thought, how can I not turn up today to do a service, the service I plan to do. If Easter doesn't speak into our sorrow, then what else will? Even the reading is about Mary Magdalene weeping at the tomb of Jesus. She wants to tend his body, but the tomb is empty. She's grief stricken. But then that Easter joy breaks through. And as these thoughts went through my head, was my sadness lifted? The answer is no, it wasn't. But what I can tell you is, is that I was overwhelmed with the truth that Jesus Christ has conquered death. And that one day that Easter joy will break through our soul as we too, like men, Meet the risen Lord. Jesus Christ is risen today. Let's hear that again. Thank you, sir.
Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Almighty God, loving Father, with gladness in our hearts and songs of praise on our lips, we come into your presence longing to know the joy of Easter. For the heavens declare the glory of the risen Lord, who can compare with the beauty of our Lord. Gracious God, on this day of Easter joy and gladness, with your people of all times and places, we bring to you our praise and adoration. From the tiniest particle of matter to the unimaginable immensities of space, your glory fills the universe. We bow before you, our Creator, in awe and wonder and praise. This day we come to celebrate together the good news of Easter. We thank you that you are the God of new life whose gracious purpose has always been to bring salvation to the ends of the earth, to renew the whole cosmos through Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you for your eternal love and power, revealed in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Through your Holy Spirit, come to us today in the power of his risen life. Take away our sins, Roll away the stone of doubts and fears. Like Mary, may the joy of Easter break through. Infuse our sorrow with hope. For these things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, to, who taught us to pray together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn now to the scriptures, but before I do, verity. Did you get any presents today? Yeah. Wow, what did you get? An Easter egg. Wow, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, an Easter bunny. Are you going to share them with Joanna? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, that's good. Are you going to share your with Joanna? <laughs> you don't have to, David. You're okay. <laughs> Let's turn to the scriptures, to John's Gospel, chapter 28, beginning at verse 11. Jesus was crucified on Good Friday, and um, the Sabbath begins on hey, oh, we've got a butterfly. New life. The Sabbath begins Friday evening, finishes uh, Saturday evening. And as you know, the Sabbath you weren't allowed to do anything, so uh, Mary had to wait until Sunday before she could go to the tomb. She goes to the tomb, she finds a stone rolled away, so she goes back to the disciples, she tells them, two of them came with her. They looked inside, but the tomb was empty. They went back to where they were staying. But it says, Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. I see the word of God. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other they asked him, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, 
Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen, and thanks be to God for his word for us this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All four Gospels state that Mary Magdalene witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus, and all four Gospels state that Mary Magdalene was among those first people to visit the tomb on that Easter morn to find it empty. And according to John's Gospel, Mary Magdalene was the first person to see Jesus alive and became the first witness of the resurrection. Mary was a troubled soul before she came into contact with Jesus, but when she did, something happened. Something so profound that she followed him from that time onwards. There's a programme called The Repair Shop. Has any of you seen that? Halloween. The Repair Shop has master craftsmen and women who work there. And the idea is that members of the public take a treasured possession to the repair shop to get it repaired. Although it's often the case that it's not just repaired, it's restored. And what I like about this programme is that the thing you need of repair doesn't have to have any monetary value, just value to whoever owns it. So more often than not, the treasure possession will have belonged to a dearly departed loved one. Regardless of the intrinsic monetary value, the item to be repaired gets the same attention regardless from that master craftsperson. One couple I watched took in an engagement ring and the engagement ring had belonged to a husband's great-grandmother, then the grandmother, then the mother, and then she gave it to him in the hopes that he would find someone to give it to, which he did. And the ring was just slightly too big. And one day she realised the ring was no longer on her finger. So they searched everywhere, but they couldn't find it. And then a year later, someone was stroking a dog, spotted the ring in the gravel on the driveway. And the ring was absolutely mangled. It's been run over for a year. And um, it had been ground down into the gravel. Two stones were missing, which unbelievably they found. Uh, and they handed the ring over to this master craftsman. And when they picked it up, it fitted her perfect. And neither of them had ever seen that ring looking as glorious as it did. And whenever I watch that program, it's like watching a parable for those like Mary Magdalene. Those are ours, should I say, like Mary Magdalene. Those who are lost ground into the dirt, broken and misshapen, but handed over to the Master to be lovingly restored. In the crucifixion, the crucifixion of Jesus, God meets us where we need it most. In our sin, in our pain, in our grief, in our sorrow in our brokenness. 
in the resurrection that God meets us in the glory of his life in Christ. The mangled body of Jesus was restored, not just made alive again, but remade in the glory of God. And the scriptures tell us that we shall be like him. At the cross, we hand over ourselves to the master. He made us, he knows how to repair us and restore us. And that work begins in this life, and it continues in this life, bit by bit, that restoration takes place until it's fully completed, when we come into the glorious resurrecting life of Christ our Lord. Mary Magdalene was a troubled soul. Then she met our Lord as he walked the earth, and such was the effect he had on her that she followed him even to the foot of the cross. She saw him die a brutal death, for her love for him didn't die. And as soon as she could, she went to that tomb. But the tomb was empty. She stayed there, weeping, for her tears became tears of joy when she heard Jesus call her name. Man. One day he too shall call our name. Claire, Ian, Pat, Audrey, Sam, John, Margaret, Verity. Jennifer, Maura, Frida, Cathy, Suzanne, Margaret, Millie, I think I've said Simon then, didn't I? I said Mary, Mary's in the story. <laughs> At the repair shop, some things had been broken through willful carelessness or neglect. Other things are broken by accident. Some things have been lost and ground into the dirt. Some things were just worn out. Last night, as I was thinking, contemplating on Easter, I'm feeling that sadness at the same time. I realise how grateful I am for those people who told me about the repair shop, the repair shop of Christ, who took me there in their prayers and handed me over. Yes, he's still working on me and there's much still to do, but I am in the Master's hands. So no need to worry. And then one day you and I will have that final polish from the Master and then we will shine with that resurrection glory that we see this day in Him. Amen. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through faith we come into your repair shop. We come to you for forgiveness. We come to you in our brokenness. We come to you in sorrow and suffering. We come to you because we are worn out and weary. Through faith we hand ourselves over for restoration, for renewal, and fuse our lives with resurrection, life, and hope. We give thanks, Lord Jesus Christ, for your work upon the cross, 
and for all you have done for us even this day through the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you make all things new. We confess our need for you afresh. We ask that you renew our hearts and minds and lives for the days ahead. Give us strength. We pray for spiritual refreshing. Shine your light in us and through us. Father, we give you thanks this day for all your gifts to us, the victory over death, the excitement of the newness of Easter life, the fullness of your love. May we live more abundantly in your peace, in your love and in your joy. When we were walking in darkness, you were there. When we were kneeling in weakness, you were there. When we drew near feeling worthless, you were there. When we were needing forgiveness, you were there. When we were searching for your grace, you were there. When we were broken, you were there. When our prayers were just prayers of tears, you were there. Thanks be to you, O God, for your indescribable gift. To you be glory and honour, this Easter day of resurrection, hope and glory. For these things we pray in the name of all names, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Fine hymn comes from our brothers and sisters in India. The hymn is And Can It Be, which speaks of the two sides of Jesus' uh, death and resurrection. Thank you, Sam.
happy Easter. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. And all the people said together, Amen.